Hey YouTube, let's figure out how to use RTL SDR. Hey guys, would you like to know how to turn your PC into a ham radio and police scanner? This is really helpful in an emergency when the internet or power is down. As long as you can listen to radio, you can have access to information, especially beyond what you can hear on AM and FM. Let's get to it. Having access to ham and police radio bands is really important in an emergency. We're all reliant on the internet and not thinking that if the grid goes down due to some natural disaster, then there is no internet or cell signals. There's no license required to be listening on this scanner, so this is an easy start to the world of radio. Here's something you can start with as a hobby. Enjoy scanning radio frequencies for approximately $30 and then you will be ready in an emergency. The device you use to turn your computer into a scanner is an RTL SDR. SDR means Software Defined Radio, and because it's software based, you can do quite a bit on a computer with no knob fiddling. Using an RTL SDR isn't a slam dunk if you watch some videos on YouTube. Normally it requires you to be an experimenter and be willing to try different things out. And it also requires some amateur radio or ham experience, especially relating to antennas. I will try to simplify this for you. Again, if I can have you learn this as a hobby, you will have a practical knowledge for a real emergency. Now this device here is an RTL SDR. It plugs into your USB-A port on your computer. You can also use a USB-C to USB-A converter, depending on what's available on your device. This can be a Mac or PC, but for this demo, we will use Windows. I'm going to add notes for Mac users in the description as I research it later. When you buy an RTL SDR, it comes with an antenna kit. There are two sets of antennas. You will need to know what to use and when to use it. For this demo, I will be focusing on some practical frequencies to look at and tell you how to set up the antenna for each of them. After you get your RTL SDR, the next thing you need is the software. For Windows, you need a free program called SDR Sharp. There's a different program to use for a Mac called GQRX, and there are other videos that show you how to install that. In the meantime, for Windows, you go to the maker of the software, which is AirSpy, and their website is airspy.com. And there you download the SDR Sharp program, which is provided for free. Now unzip the entire contents of the zip file into an SDR Sharp folder. And for easy use, make a shortcut for sdrsharp.exe. But before you do this, you need to click on install RTL SDR dot bat. Then launch the zadig.exe program. From there, you go to options and select all devices this will display the option that you want, which is Bulk In Interface, Interface 0. Install the driver. Mine says reinstall right now because it's, it's already installed. Now after installation, you are ready to use SDR Sharp. That's it. So the first thing you're going to do when you start RTL SDR is you're going to go to the Settings button, and from there you're going to select the device and the device will be listed already as generic RTL 2832U OEM. Just pick that. It will be the default. And then below it, you see a section called RF gain at the very bottom there. And that is something you will have to adjust as you have weak signals and strong signals. 
And, and to start with, use the two short antennas. The first thing we're going to access is the hand band at 70 centimeters, which is commonly used in UHF and is a popular band. This is around 430 to 450 megahertz. For each of these bands, you need a certain length of antenna. I will put a reference to tell you antenna lengths for each specific frequency range. Fortunately, RTLSDR already have common measurements based on the number of segments used for each antenna. But scientifically speaking, you have to make sure that the antenna is sized for the frequency so that the antenna is called resonant. If you just plug in the antenna without thought, you will think there's no one on the air. So the 70 centimeter band tells you the wavelength of the radio waves approximately. So 70 centimeters. We need one half of that as a total length of the antenna. This is known as a half length dipole. So that's 35 centimeters. Then the RTL SDR antenna has a couple of centimeters for connecting parts. So the actual length we need is approximately about a foot. So divided by two segments, we need around six inches a piece. Unfortunately, the short antenna is slightly shorter than six inches. So we'll have to go with that. So just use the small antenna extended at max for each of the elements. Now we can listen in on the 70 centimeter ham band. Okay, uh, I'm still doing my little search. I'm going looking for the I'm Hey, simplex, uh, uh, I should say VHF would be in, uh, better reaching out there to you than UHF. You know, it, it doesn't matter. We're, we're close enough. I'll be able to hear you on e e either one. Okay. Stand by. Okay, W. W, B6, always zero B, out here in Miami. Hanging by for her. For this band, you set the buttons on the left to NFM in a bandwidth of 8,000. Then you need to adjust the squelch as you, as you need to, to limit the noise. The next interesting frequency range is the FRS, which is the walkie-talkie frequency, and the GMRS band, which is used for personal use. This is around 462 to 467 megahertz. The antenna for this is exactly the length of the one used for the 70 centimeter band, which is the full length of the short antenna. This one actually fits that exactly. Going up in frequency, going up in frequency, Let's look at the public safety radio bands. This is around the 470 to 480 megahertz. It's easy to find the range of police, fire, and EMS radio frequencies in your area. Just go to radioreference.com, then go to the database, find your area, and then you can scan the frequency list. I searched here for Los Angeles County and found the frequencies of interest for me. In some big cities, the radio for police may be encoded using trunked radio, so it's digital. That requires some special techniques, so I won't discuss that here. However, in my case, I was able to listen to LA County Sheriff Stations and the Fire Department. Hey. Hey, we copied the two there, and we're on standby on 11. But uh, another unit on, hold on. Can I get another unit to Rosemead and uh, Valley? Uh -huh. and
Okay, sir, hit up, five five Tom. Copy that. Going down in frequency, let's see if we can listen to the air traffic control band. This is around the uh, 120 megahertz area. Your success in listening to this band depends on whether you're in the path of airplanes. Each airport uses a different set of frequencies. But at the LAX airport, the landing approach tower is on 128.5 megahertz, which I found on the internet. All other airports will be in the same area. This frequency is a low level signal, so I have to increase my gain to the max. And I applied a baseband filter so I can listen to it. It is kind of noisy on this band. The other popular frequency range in some places is the 2 meter ham band. The signals are weaker for me in this range and there's a lot of a lot of digital traffic and there's a lot of digital traffic here. So it's not usually a place for listening to conversations at least in my area. Your area may be different. The next significant ham band within reach of the RTL SDR is the 6 meter band which is near 50 megahertz. Unfortunately this requires a much longer antenna and the standard one that comes with the RTL SDR is too short for that. That would require more than 4.5 feet per antenna or a total antenna length of over 9 feet. So if you want to make that little bit of a project you can make a dipole that's 9 feet long. This is a nice starting point to learn how to use radio. Later on, you may want to think about getting a ham license so you can talk in the ham frequencies. Those radios are very inexpensive like the Chinese Baofeng which is ultra popular. Every ham operator must have one of those. Or if you don't want to take the ham test, you could start off with a GMRS license which is for the entire family and there's no test. I talk about this in the video on ham radios for emergencies. So the whole family can be talking on GMRS. I hope you subscribe to my channel and share this content with your friends. Thank you for watching.